Yeah, so um, good morning everyone and I'm the one standing between you and uh, lunch. So I'll try to keep my presentation as um, concise and uh, as short as possible. Okay, so um, I'm Norman, I'm a senior lecturer at SUTD. So, uh, first, let me introduce myself. So actually, uh, I don't have a computing background. So I have, uh, I graduated from NUS in mechanical engineering in 2002, and then I did a PhD in computational material science. Then I went over to the polys to teach uh, maths and physics before I actually joined SUTD to teach computing. So I'm re relatively, although I've, um, in, in my uh, courses and so on, I've done a lot of programming, but um, in my teaching career, um, which I started with, with RP and then joined SP, I uh, actually taught maths and physics before I decided to, to actually make a subtle career change and teach programming at SUTD. Okay, right, so, um, okay. Uh, yeah, so one of the things I, I'm interested in, uh, apart from teaching, is learning analytics. I'm doing some data analysis with uh, student data, uh, log data from our, from our online systems and understanding student behavior. Okay, so in a nutshell, uh, this is what my, my talk can be summarized in these three sentences. So we actually uh, implemented, um, we, we inherited our course from MIT with a certain syllabus, and over, over time it has evolved to uh, have uh, certain changes, and one of the changes that we made uh, last year was to include an uh, introduction to machine learning in our first year Python programming course in SUTD. Um, we use the flipped classroom format, so that means that some of the materials we put it online for students to learn before coming to class, and then with, when it came to class, then we uh, carry on from there. Um, and of course, the outcome of the, this introduction was feedback by students who were mixed, uh, meaning that some some students uh, liked it, some students, uh, many students didn't like it. So, okay, so it's a bit of, um, so let me just give you an introduction of our digital world course. So, um, some of you might be aware that SUTD has a different curriculum. Uh, our first year, when students join us, uh, for the first year with, in uh, the three terms, uh, it's a common first year. And um, they do maths and physics and uh, humanities subjects. And where does the computing course come in? So it comes in the third term in the common first year. Then after that, um, then they choose their specialization for the remaining five terms. Okay. Our Python programming course is not just about um, the uh, syntax, algorithms, and stuff like that, but also involves um, working with things like Raspberry Pi, and um, programming the Raspberry Pi to control the Tmail robot. So they write, so for, to give you an example, like in, um, in controlling the robots, they need to use things like if-else, uh, while loops, and so on. And of course, we also um, uh, bring in the Internet of Things. So um, using Google Firebase, we, the students actually write uh, Python code to send instructions, to send data to Google Firebase. And then Raspberry Pi uh, downloads data from the Google, Pi, uh, Google Firebase and then controls the robot. And of course, the students use this, the skills that they pick up to actually propose their own uh, projects, which is uh, what you see here, uh, the 1D and 2D uh, projects. Yeah? Okay, um, here's how our curriculum in our course, which is called the Digital World, is structured. So in the first six weeks, um, they will we will teach them the basics of Python programming. So uh, the programming concepts go all the way to uh, dictionaries, uh, strings, and so on. And then after that, they do OOP for two weeks. And um, so our change here is that we, instead of having control engineering for one week, we took that control engineering out and we put in machine learning. And after that, they complete a the course by uh, using Python to do their GUI. Uh, which is, uh, we use a Kiwi, um, Kiwi package. So why did, why did we introduce machine learning? So um, uh, SUTD has an initiative that, that, that says that um, every undergrad uh, who comes to SUTD will have a chance to take machine learning or AI related courses. And that's, uh, that's quite a big step because um, you can consider that uh, we have actually four specializations, and um, one of the specializations include architecture. So what basically our provost is saying is that, okay, even the architecture students would have to learn either machine learning or AI. Okay, so that's, 
that, that, that is the, that's one of the motivations for us to make this change because we wanted to give um, students, uh, all ICTD students, a uh, background to what machine learning is. Okay? Okay, so our pedagogy, uh, as I mentioned, uses active learning at Flip Classroom. So I'll show you a picture of our classroom. So, uh, as, whoops, what happened? Okay, so you're looking at my Facebook page, but never mind. Um, okay. Okay, so where were we? Um, yeah, or oh, the picture of the classroom, okay. Okay, so uh, basically the, um, I stood on a table at the back of the classroom and took this picture. So essentially, as you can see, um, this is what we call our co-op classrooms. The students, um, at this point in time, we have, we have just set them a, a mini project to do for a Python class. So they are, as you can see, they are working around in groups um, and the furniture, uh, and they've rearranged the furniture to actually uh, suit that. So that's one thing. And of course, there are whiteboards around our classroom, and then they, some of them, as you can see, are using uh, whiteboards to actually uh, discuss how they will approach the problem. And we also have actually uh, projectors surrounding the classroom, and uh, as you can see in the front, there are two projectors, and uh, often instructors use this to their advantage. Yep. Okay. So, so that's, that's essentially our uh, pedagogy yeah? uh, uh, when it comes to our class. Okay, so um, in introducing machine learning to our course, we had, some, uh, we had several constraints to consider. So one is the large teaching team, uh, essentially because this course is offered to the whole school. So we have about 10 classes, and that means a lot of faculty are involved in, in, in teaching. Um, we also have a diverse student ability because some of our students um, come from various backgrounds, uh, not only A-level but polytechnic and some of we have international students as well. And of course, um, yeah, I, I, and I guess that's true for pretty much every course in NUS too. Um, uh, we have also uh, five, con we, every week we see them for five contact hours, so we also have to consider this when, when planning our change. And, um, okay, one of, and this is, uh, the last point which I want to make about uh, difficulties in terminology is not really a constraint in uh, SUTD, but more like in the machine learning field. So what happens is that in a machine learning field, you pick up, say you take three different textbooks, you'll find that they use different terms to refer to the same thing. So for example, uh, one book may use the word variable to refer to a column of data, and you pick up another book, they call it a uh, feature. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, give you another example, if for, for a row of data, which is a single measurement taken on, on, on something. So one book may call it a record, so another book may call it a row, and another book may call it an instance. And, and you know, if you, if you read three different books, you, you find that they, they are all, the termi not, terminology is very diverse. So what happens is that, um, this is one of the things, and then we really had to consider, okay, what, what, um, uh, very carefully, you know, what are the terminology that, 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 that we're gonna use, okay? Okay, so our starting point in, in machine learning is always a data set, and what happens is that we chose the breast cancer data, breast cancer data set. And of course, currently, I'm uh, not really um, convinced that this is the best decision, but this is, was the best decision that we could have made in the circumstances. So what happens is that this breast cancer data set has uh, 30 numerical features, that means 30 measurements on breast cancer cells, um, with each uh, row has a certain classification of breast cancer, whether it's uh, malignant breast cancer or benign breast cancer. Okay, okay. So, so that's the first step. And the next step was we had to plan our implementation. So here's, our, here's what our implementation is actually, actually like. So um, we had to record videos to give uh, students the idea of uh, machine learning uh, we also had a pre-class activity where we gave them a worksheet to actually complete some Python code. And to make sure they actually did all this work, we had an online quiz for, for scores. Okay? 
And then after that, when it came to class, then they, we give them an in-class problem set for them to do uh, with the guidance of the, the instructor. Okay, so what, what do we want to learn? What do you want the students to learn uh, about machine learning in this process? So it's actually a few things, a few uh, basic ideas that, that are really applicable regardless of the kind of uh, machine learning or data analytics that you do. So first thing is that you must understand the data set. Okay, you must also understand the process of machine learning. And then we wanted to also expose them to uh, two different kinds of models. One model for um, numerical prediction and one model for categorical prediction. Okay, so categorical prediction means your, your model will predict, okay, well, either it's, a, uh, that's why we chose a breast cancer set because it's a, actually quite a good uh, data set for breast um, categorical prediction because it's like, um, you either predict whether the cancer is malignant or, or benign. And then the, furthermore, the data set is quite balanced. Uh, there is 60% of one category versus 40% of the other. Okay, so that's, that's one of the, that's one of the good reasons. That's one, that's one reason why we chose a breast cancer data set. Of course, it's not so good for numerical prediction because there is no numerical target inside. But we still had, we, we didn't want to overload them with too many data, data sets, so we, we, we stuck with the breast cancer data set. Okay, so, what model do we choose for each kind of uh, machine uh, uh, model? What model do we choose for each type of uh, prediction? So for numerical prediction, we choose the linear regression. And for the categorical prediction, um, we chose the uh, k-nearest neighbors uh, for, for the reason that it's probably one of the easiest to describe. There's only one single parameter involved. Um, and uh, it, you, you know, we can actually draw, draw diagrams on the whiteboard to actually explain it. And for linear regression, uh, that's probably because um, students will come to us really knowing a lot of mathematics and they will know what a straight line is, essentially. Um, okay, so that's, is that all? The concepts in data mining, so that's not all actually. The students, we found that the students also had to learn with a few things. Um, the Jupyter Notebook, because we wanted them to, to be exposed to what uh, true data scientists do, real you know, when data scientists, when doing um, machine learning, they, they typically use the Jupyter Notebook because of its features. You could put, uh, instead on top of Python code, you can put in comments and your explanation as well. Uh, they also had to learn uh, matplotlib pyplot, which is a plotting of uh, diagrams in order to understand the data. Okay, to do the machine learning, you've got to use the scikit-learn uh, library. Uh, okay, and, and and in order to use the scikit-learn library, we've got to be familiar with NumPy arrays. So actually in that one week, it seems like the students had, had a lot to cope with. And earlier, earlier just now, I mentioned about the diverse terminology problem. So in the end, um, we followed the terms used in the scikit-learn uh, documentation, and that's, that's how we came, came to the final decision on what, what terminology to use. So the, the, through our problem set, we hope that they have, they learn, that our students uh, learn the steps in machine learning, which is to first you understand the data, okay, and then you have, then the next step you have to do is to split the data set into the training set, a validation set, and a test set, and then you use each of the sets for different purposes. The training set you use to build the model. Uh, validation set is to choose the best model uh, if you have uh, different parameters involved or different models that you want to choose from. And finally, you want, to, you want to use the test set to evaluate the model's performance on uh, unseen data. Um, so in understanding the, the data set, we, we make use of the, we, we expose students to the five number summary, which is a basic thing in statistics. And of course, we also uh, expose them to doing matplotlib plots. And in evaluating the, which model to choose, we used for linear regression, we told them about R2 score and the mean squared error. Um, we just treated these things like a black box. In other words, we just tell you, okay, so to, to see how, to know how well your, your model is like, just look at the R2 score, the bigger the better, the highest possible is one, the smallest possible is zero. Okay, so we kept it at a level because our course is not a statistics or a mathematical, uh, mathematical course. Um, for the K nearest neighbors, which is a binary prediction, then of course the results are summarized in a confusion matrix and we expose them to that and also the different metrics, accuracy, um, accuracy, sensitivity, and so on. Okay, 
So uh, typically, this is an example of what the code is like. Okay, so for in the process of machine learning, one step has one line of code in the scikit-learn library. Um, essentially, um, yeah, it's 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 basically if you know the steps in machine learning, the the the, the code for linear regression will be like this. It's um, essentially like how do you how for example how do you split the data is just this line. Yes, and how you actually build the model is just these two lines. How do you make your prediction is just one line. How do you evaluate the, the, the performance of your model is also just one line. Okay, so it's actually the coding is actually easy. And what I, told my, I, what I told my colleagues is this, the coding is not the issue, it's the concepts. So in, in, in going through our lessons, um, we actually spend, how long do you think I spend on to, to explain this to students? So it's actually I, I spent about uh, 45 minutes to one hour just telling them, okay, just going, making sure that they understand at each line of code, what, what is it that they're doing. Okay, right? So essentially, this is the thing. So the, 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 the code is short, but the concepts are deep because the, the, the main point is that in writing the code, they have got to know what they are doing at each step. Okay, so uh, student difficulties. Uh, so. Um, as, as we were delivering the lessons, um, we also observed uh, several difficulties that students face. So one thing is actually the NumPy, um, uh, learning NumPy, because NumPy is the Python package for processing sci uh, well, uh, scientific computation. And uh, NumPy arrays are different from the Python inbuilt um, list and nested list. So, so um, students were not really familiar with, with the how NumPy arrays work. Okay, and so we find that we found that in lessons we actually had to uh, give them a primer on NumPy arrays and how they work before actually doing the, the machine learning. Uh, next thing is um, getting the concepts across. So um, how 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 is it that uh, I was the one who developed the materials and my experience came from teaching adults uh, in a continuing education course. So um, so, uh, and it's quite common to, to see that um, people are not, not sure or not, not sure why you have to, to, develop, to divide the data set into these um, three partitions. Why is it that you need a training set? Why do you need a validation set? Why do you need a test set? So it takes a bit of time to, to, to get the idea across that th these different sets are needed for the different purposes uh, and to, to come up with uh, suitable analogies to actually um, uh, convince the students that these uh, partitions is necessary. And the third difficulty was the Jupyter Notebook because uh, in, in our current impl implementation of the course, we actually started with uh, Spider. Uh, we introduced the programming of Python using the Spider um, IDE and then suddenly when we, we, we threw them that one week of machine learning, we told them, okay, now you have to use Ju Jupyter Notebook. Um, we, we, I, I did try to, to overcome this difficulty by giving them a, a short video, but apparently it was not enough because we had complaints in the end of course, end of course feedback about you know, why do we have to suddenly use Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so how did the students take to it? So this is one sample of the end of course feedback. There were nothing, that, sad to say, there were no positive comments uh, about this machine learning. Yeah, but there were, the, but typical of comments was like, you know, it's too short. Um, we, we, really, we really couldn't grasp it. We were just copying code down um, and, and so on. Yeah, so, uh, but I think this was the most insightful comment actually that, that we had, uh, I've read, because it says that, you know, the, the student recognizes that actually there is a lot of statistics, computing, and, um, and math inside. It's just that we squeeze everything into one week, they, they found it hard to ap appreciate it. Yeah, so of course, um, yeah, uh, Dr. Oka sitting at the back is my subject lead. So of course, we are working with, uh, we're working together to improve this. And so currently, uh, future improvement. Um, one of the things. So yeah, some of the ideas that we might have for future improvement is that firstly, we would review what is placed in the flip portion because we had we threw quite a lot in the flip portion, and students actually had to had, had to uh, uh, you know watch a lot. Now, our, our response of students were already diverse because we had students who, at the start of the week, had already completed all our problem set. But at the same time, uh, we had students who, who came to us and said, you know, um, after watching your videos, 
I don't really still really know what a confusion matrix is. So, so that's the thing. So we really have, uh, we really have to think very carefully how we're going to manage this diverse ability. And that's why one of the things that, that could be done is to review what is placed in the flip portion. Uh, as I mentioned, um, I think we, we also need to tell a very compelling story. Um, so the breast cancer data set is very good for the categorical prediction, but perhaps we need to, to strengthen, the, uh, strengthen the, the part about linear regression. Uh, because what I just did was to just find two features in the breast cancer data set and say, okay, hey, you can regress these two together and you get this trend and so on. So we might, have, we might uh, perhaps to enhance the appreciation we, and we might have to strengthen the story and then so we might have to find a better data set for this. And of course, um, another thing that we can do very easily is a, it's a low-hanging fruit actually, is to, to actually introduce some ideas earlier. For example, we can introduce NumPy arrays earlier, we can introduce matplotlib earlier. All right? Okay, so um, that's the end of my talk. Um, if any questions, if not, I guess we are all hungry. I'm hungry too, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, have you considered the Boston housing data set? Uh, uh, yeah, I have, I have, yes, I have. Um, because there, there, are, there, are, there are two sides to this, so we can use the Boston housing data set to teach regression, but then, then the, the, the trade-off is that then the students have to uh, understand two data sets instead of one. So, so we, we're still like you know, weighing what, what's the best. Yeah, but yeah, thanks. The, the, the Boston housing data set is a good suggestion. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Well, it looks like everyone's uh, ready for lunch. So yes, uh, yes, right. <laughs> let's, let's end now. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah.